Bossy boss, LOL. Good luck. How many openings do I know well? Mm. You know what I'm going to say to that. How do you define well? I'm going to play this Gurganidza variation. I often play this way with g6, bishop, g7 if they don't let me play a Jinjian, the Jinji Indian. Did the student surpass his teacher? Absolutely, yeah. He's just a stronger player than me, that's for sure. But I already knew he was going to be really strong because he made master when he was like 12. I made master when I was 15. Uh, Andrew was absolutely a prodigy. Like you just knew if he continued with chess, he was going to be very, very good. He made GM when he was 18, I think. Okay, we're undermining the center. Could have also played knight f5. That might have been a little bit better, actually. Ooh, I get another chance to play it. So if I take here, he takes here. So let's go for it. And I get the bishop pair. All right. Interesting position, but I think I'm just winning a pawn here. Kind of tempted to just start playing on the queen side, but for a pawn, we're willing to go ahead and just capture. How many hours do I devote to chess every day? Do I take days off? Are your students taught in person? Do you recommend a career in chess? Is it lucrative? That's a lot of questions you just <laughs> put into a few sentences there. Old suit man. Um... I mean, I'm always looking at chess pretty much. Like, I, I'm not studying. I wouldn't say I'm studying chess actively at this point in my chess career. I think I misplayed this, by the way, because white can take here. Uh, if I take, take, there was queen d4, so white should have just captured. I wouldn't have been able to take back. Um, so I'm always, like, around chess, even if I'm not, like, playing tournaments actively. You know, I'm teaching. I'm following games at the high level, so I'm following tournaments that my peers play. Trying to stay involved in like what's going on in the chess world. Uh, I don't do a lot of in-person teaching anymore. I used to, even like before the pandemic, uh, which was a shame because I had to cut some of that out, obviously because of the pandemic. I really like teaching in person, but no, most of my stuff is online these days. Would I recommend a career in chess and is it lucrative? Um, I would say don't get into chess for the money. It can become lucrative if you're very successful, but we're talking like a sliver of a percentage. And it helps if you're a title player for sure. You know, I think if you're considering a career in chess, unless there's some sort of like very clear avenue to you where not having the master title at a minimum, like NM or FM is needed, um, then I, I would strongly advise against it unless you have like a certain plan in mind. I just think the title is almost like a prerequisite if you're really going to try to make like a decent living in chess. And I'm talking like teaching. I'm not talking playing chess because that's like a almost a dead profession from a money-making standpoint. Uh, if you are a master and are thinking about it, again, like don't, don't do it because the money, like the money can come over time, but it's going to be a long process. It's probably going to take five to 10 years for the money to start uh, showing up. Thank you, Hesse. Thank you, says, wish we see your GM title one day. Yeah, I'm going to try to make a go of it at some point. Ooh, yeah, 95 would have been good there. Take 95. I guess I can play Rook F2 against that, but I, I definitely didn't see 95 as a possibility. Hello, Lolly, by the way. Let's go here. I'm trying to take the second rank with my rook. I'm up a pawn here. Bishop f5 is coming. And my opponent has no time. Thanks for the game, bossy boss. Yeah, this uh, treatment of the position, probably not the best. I actually think when black plays this early d5, it's most uncomfortable for black. If white just keeps the tension and like develops with knight f3. Because when e5 is played, black kind of knows that they get to use the f5 square. You can definitely play like this, but I think the way you played it where you gave up the bishop pair, mm, not so great. 
Although I should have probably taken here, maybe even taken here first, because again, the way I played it, you can capture on E5 at the moment. Oh, look at this. The engine's really unhappy with this. We have the uh, back and forth, like double question mark, red moves. You never like to see that. Multiple red moves. <laughs> yeah, so had you taken E5, I can't take back because of this alignment issue. Queen D4, pin the knight to the king. And even if I defend, you've got F4, uh, just knight F3 as well. This is a terrible position for me. I think you missed knight takes e4 for black earlier when the queens were staring at each other. Let's see. Very possible. Although a2 was hanging. Ah, uh, yeah, you can play knight takes e4 right here. Yep, good point. Because if I take, white recaptures with the knight. So that was another moment for white to uh, regain a little bit of material. Yeah, and this is good for black. Although even here, I played a little sloppy. Knight e5, as pointed out. I thought I was removing the defender. Ooh, and rook f2 is not even good. Rook f2, knight g3. I guess my rook probably has issues there defending the knight. Best move, bishop f5, and then this. I would take white here in a practical game <clears throat> with the two knights against the rook. I would definitely take white here. Okay, so a bit of a sloppy game on both our parts. Bossy Boss, thank you for the game.